Hey guys, it's Ray Alvarez, Shoot With Ray. This time we're gonna be working with Lindsay, we're gonna be working with Kay. I'm gonna show you the BTS of our photo shoot. We have a few looks planned with this model. I'm gonna be shooting with my Sony a7R5. So I'm not sure if you guys already knew this, but I used to shoot Nikon, and I did transition to Sony before I started recording YouTube videos. In today's video, I'm gonna be showing you and explaining why I love the Sony more than I loved my whole Nikon system. I'm gonna be explaining to you the details in what my boy Kevin calls the Bible which is the menu. Before we get into this video, I definitely want you guys to subscribe to my channel if you already haven't. I just wanna tell you that every single time you watch my videos or subscribe and leave me comments, like them, it helps me make more videos for you so that way you can learn more and also I can grow more. Subscribe to this channel, click the button below. Do it now. There you go. All right, now that you subscribe, let's get into this video. So I made the switch not so long ago from Nikon to Sony. I have to admit, I'm on cloud nine. This camera system has treated me so good and I'm happy with my purchase of the Sony a7R5 and the G Master lenses on my lineup. Here's a little bit of background. For the last seven years, I've been loyal to the Nikon system. I went from DSLR to mirrorless, and I must say that in a studio setting, the Nikon bodies perform. However, being in the wedding industry, I feel that Nikons lack, especially in the focus features. The Sony Eye Autofocus, or AF, runs circles around the Nikon's version of it. The eye detection autofocus feature on the Nikon's is super slow, never accurate. I mean, with the Nikon, it would grab focus on random items. The Sony IAF was one of the features that I really, really loved and had me on switching over the whole system. Take a look at this video. I was at a wedding and I was working on the dance floor. I am one handling this camera. I'm simply moving it around, focusing, and the Sony is blowing me away with how it's finding, tracking, and nailing focus on the eyes. It even detects the eyes behind sunglasses. Wow. Time out. Did you subscribe yet? Hit the button. All right. Sony is also known for its amazing video capabilities. I don't even have to brag about it. We all know this. <laughs> now let's talk about the ergonomics. I'm a small guy. I have small hands. And this camera fits perfectly in my hands. The way my hands wrap around the right side of the body, I can single-handedly take pictures if I really wanted to. But I'm not going to do that. Although many other camera brands and models have this feature, I love how seamless and simple it is to send photos to your phone or device using a Bluetooth and Wi-Fi capabilities. In this clip, I'm using Sony Imaging Edge, which is the app that I downloaded on my device to tether to the camera and review photos with Lindsay. If you've seen any of my videos before, you know I'm big on communication and making sure that we're all on the same page within the creative process. My goal is to make sure whoever's in front of my camera is not only enjoying the experience, but that I provide them with the imagery that they envision. So I quote unquote live proof with my subject or my client. Another one of the issues I faced a lot while I owned Nikon was the terrible noise. Once you go over, let's say, I don't know, 3200 ISO, the ISO sensitivity was a joke. Sorry, not sorry. Sony, on the other hand, has an amazing sensor. Enduring events like the sparkler exits or lantern send-offs and etc., the camera prevails. It does not struggle at all. Plus, now that AI technology is embedded into softwares that I use, such as Lightroom, you can always save those images with the denoiser option. All right, so one thing Sony owners hate, but I'm not mad at it, is the Bible. I mean, the menu. Kevin always calls it the Bible because it's just full of pages and sections and he says it's super long. I feel the menu is better than the Nikon menu as it is more organized to a degree. The cool thing is you can even customize the menu and only have the common settings and functions that you usually change on that custom menu. Speaking of customization, converting over wasn't too difficult for me because of the customization options for all of the buttons on the camera body which made it easier to set them similar to the layout that I was used to with Nikon. Another cool feature is the customization and preset settings that can be saved onto an SD card or a CF Express card. And in a pinch, I can share that preset and load it up to my partner's camera and bam, my settings are live on that camera body. Or if I quickly need to set my camera up with video settings to film a YouTube video, then I can just pop in Kevin's video preset onto my camera and boom, I've got myself a video ready camera body. 
Look, I'm not trying to shit on Nikon at all. I love Nikon and the gear has taken me to where I am today, but it was truly time for a switch. I played with the Z9, but I wanted to own my own Z9 body. The Z9 was almost $4,000. The question was, do I invest on new Z lenses or do I start all over with a new brand and just go beyond? And that's why I switched from Nikon to Sony. All right. All right, guys, I'm going to introduce the model Lindsay, which you can follow on Instagram right below. High five. Yeah. All right, I'm off this. All right, guys, there you have it. We finished the shoot. I had so much fun. I hope you guys enjoyed it. It always helps me out when you guys subscribe to my channel, give me some comments, leave me a like. So if you haven't done that already, go ahead and do it. Like, comment, and subscribe. You guys, if you're learning, that's important to me. So go ahead, take the knowledge that I'm showing you guys, put it into real practice out there, and I can't wait to see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.